Hello, my name is Jason Mock. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Toronto at Scarborough campus. Today, I'll be going over topic one, which includes uh, the topic unemployment and inflation for the MGEA 06 course taught by RSO. In part A of topic one, we'll be dealing with unemployment. Unemployment occurs when people are out of work and are actively seeking one. A high unemployment rate hurts the economy of a country because it causes a waste of scarce economic resources and reduces the long-run growth potential of the economy. An economy with high unemployment rates producing with its production possibility frontiers. In order to understand unemployment, we have to first understand what is the adult population. There are three components of adult populations. The first ones are those who are employed. Those who are employed are those who get a paid job. The second one are those who are unemployed. They are the ones who currently do not have a job, but are currently looking for one. And the last one are those who are not in the labor force. They are the ones who do not have a job and are not looking for one. When we're dealing with exam questions related to unemployment, there are five key formulas that you have to remember. The first one is that adult populations equals those employed plus those who are unemployed and those who are not in the labor force. The second one is that labor force equals to those who are employed and those unemployed. The third one is that unemployment rate equals to those who are unemployed divided by the labor force times 100%. And the fourth one is employment rate equals to employment, those who are employed divided by the adult population times 100%. And the last one is the labor force participation rate. It equals to labor force divided by the adult population times 100%. Some keynotes to unemployment topic. The first one is that unemployment rate will never be zero. The second one is that full unemployment rate is the level of employment obtained when the economy is operating at its full potential. And the last one is that when an un unemployment rate goes up, it may cause underemployment and discourage workers. In part B of topic one, we'll be dealing with inflation. Inflation refers to the percentage change in the general prices level each year. There are four issues related to inflation. The first one is that it reduces the purchasing power of money. The second one is that it reduces the real value of anything whose price is fixed in money terms. The third one is a redistribution of wealth. And the fourth one is that it causes in inefficiency due to the erosion of money as a medium of exchange. Later on, we'll be going over concrete examples uh, on how to calculate inflation depending on whether it, is C, uh, whether it is using CPI as basis or using GDP deflator as the basis. But the general idea of computing inflation is to first find the total value of a bundle for one period. And the second one is to find the total, the second step is to find a total value of a bundle for the p second period. And lastly is to calculate inflation, which is the total value of the bundle for the second period minus the total value of the bundle for the first period divided by the total value of the bundle for first period times 100%. There are two types of price indexes which measure inflations. The first one is the consumer price index, also known as CPI. It measures how fast the prices of goods and services bought by a typical Canadian household change over time. And it uses the base year bundle as basis for calculation. The second one is a GDP deflator. It measures how fast the prices of goods and services produced within Canada or a given country change over time, and it uses the current year bundle as basis for calculation. Some keynotes when we're looking at consumer price index and the GDP deflator. The differences between CPI and the GDP deflator are that the first one is CPI uses the bundle purchased by a typical household. While well, GDP deflator uses the bundle produced within the country, what this means is that some items in the bundle will only attribute to either CPI or GDP deflator when we're uh, calculating the indexes. The second one is that GDP deflator uses the bundle that is currently produced, and CPI uses a fixed bundle, which is the base year bundle. What this means is that the quantity period used for the basis of GDP or CPI calculations are different. Whenever we're dealing with questions uh, related to CPI and the GDP deflator, the first most common step that we have to do is to get the price index. 
The general idea of getting the price index is to first get the cost of a bundle in different time periods. And step two, choose the time period as base year, and let's say period one. And step three is to multiply the cost of bundle in different time period by 100 over the base year bundle. In this example, we'll be using period, period one. We'll be going over some concrete examples on how to uh, get the price index later on. But there are some uh, key notes that we should t uh, take note of. The first one is for CPI. When we're calculating the cost of a bundle for various periods, always use the quantity of base year as your basis of calculation. And for GDP deflator, when we're calculating the cost of a bundle for various periods, we should always use the quantity of current year as basis of calculation.